It is not very hard in the NASCAR Cup Series to become a villain. There have been many instances where drivers will lose their cool behind the wheel of their race car, take out a popular driver, or just pull one of the most boneheaded moves ever seen. Just like when Brad Keselowski made half of the field it seemed like mad during the 2014 NASCAR race at Charlotte. He made Matt Kenseth the Denny Hamlin so upset that even Tony Stewart got involved and tried to take his anchor out of Brad Keselowski. This was one of the hottest nights in the 2014 season. Now as the cars stack up at the entrance to the pit road, that's the hit Matt Kenseth was talking about. And while doing that, Kozlowski runs into the back of Tony Stewart, so then this. From Tony Stewart's bumper camera. And on the cooldown lap, there was that. Yeah, we were uh, on that green-white checker. We had Brad behind us. We knew he was going to be aggressive because it's his only shot. But it's, uh, you know, he just ran right into us and knocked us up the racetrack. And uh, um, I showed him his displeasure on the cool-down lap, and uh, I brake-checked him uh, down the back stretch to, to give everyone the whole story. And then he tried to spin us out. Um, then we got to pit lane, and he just plowed into the 14 and the 20. 20, I, he was, his belts were off. And I uh, ran into him and then uh, ran into us again, coming on pit road. Then he went through the garage and did burnouts and he knocked somebody's transmission clear through somebody else's pit stall. So uh, he was just out of control and he cost us six spots. But what goes around comes around. Two drivers you would rarely ever see probably get in a confrontation between each other is Tiny Casey Kane and Big Ryan Newman. These are two drivers you would not expect to be at odds. But it happened at the 2010 Atlanta race when Casey Kane and Ryan Newman got into it with a handful of laps to go. Once they parked their cars in the garage area, Newman walked over to Kane and had some words with him. He might not be happy about it. Well, we'll keep an eye on it, but... Uh... Oh, he's, yeah, yeah, I oh, he's not yeah. happy at all about it. Oh, yeah, he's letting them know. Good call there, Andy. And yeah, we told you we'd keep a camera on this because uh, Ryan and Casey are going to have a discussion. Remember, these guys go back to days when they were running sprints and midgets. Ryan's smiling, but Casey's not. Yeah, they both kind of got a beef there. And I just think what Ryan, racing. yeah, Ryan's trying to tell him he was really just trying to give him a, a push by the car, uh, a little nudge down the back straightaway, but hit him a little too hard and. Of course, Casey's not understanding that. While that continues, let's check in with Jamie Little. 45, Kara really messed up Noah right there. Oh, contact again. Josh Perry in the eight. Oh, oh now oh, go. Oh, no. Slammed into the side of him, and he spins. Sees Karam into the wall. What a move by that yellow car of Jones to miss the wreck. And here comes the rest of the field. They can't see. It's smoke and dust all the way across. More coming in too fast and more contact. A huge impact to Tyler Reddick in that 48. Drivers going to this corner and contact again. And now, see this contact? They're banging into each other off the racetrack. And now Noah, I don't know if he had a mechanical issue or just hung a right in frustration. And that started this massive crash behind them. One of NASCAR's newest and rising stars that has become very polarizing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and early on in the NASCAR Cup Series is Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson is a generational talent that needs to be able to hone his skills behind the wheel. Sometimes he lets his anger get the best of him, just like at Road America when he wrecked Sage Karam and sent a collection of vehicles spinning out of control behind him. Even Brandon Brown had a horrible impact after this accident. The night that Kevin Harvick became the villain again in the NASCAR Cup Series just showed the favoritism that are shown behind Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott fans. Harvick and Elliott were racing hard for the win. Harvick slid up into Elliott and put him in the wall. Elliott ended up blowing a tire and had to make an unscheduled pit stop, ultimately costing him a shot at the victory. 
Elliott would pull back up on the racetrack, block Kevin Harvick until Kyle Larson was able to catch him and pass him. Harvick and Elliott would go down pit road, and Harvick would have some choice words with Elliott as he was extremely upset, and honestly, rightfully so, as Elliott had manipulated the outcome of the race, and he was a lap down. First spot into the next round, and look at these two on pit road. And quickly getting the helmet off, both drivers climbing out quickly. Harvick keeps his helmet on. Of course, uh, not happy with Chase Elliott. So let's start there. What was the conversation between you and Chase after the race? I just told him, you know, it was kind of a chicken shit move that he did there at the end. You know, we race, we're racing for the freaking win at Bristol. We're three wide in the middle, and he throws a temper tantrum like, like, um, you know, I was just trying to trying to get the lead and racing hard. And then he pulls up in front of me and just sits there until I lose the whole lead. So, you know, just hate it for our Subway Ford Mustang team. Um, you know, to, to be able to lose a race like that. I watched him let the 24 go by, and, and then anytime you run into him, it's a problem. So they can boo all they want. I don't care. How much of this is compounded by the fact that you were so close to winning and, and to have it slip away, but then also what happened uh, when you when he went by you again? Yeah, well, I just I lost so much there, and then, you know, when I got behind the car, I kept getting tied off the corner, and I couldn't run my line. So, um God damn it. I'm, I'm ready to rip somebody's freaking head off. It's Bristol, baby. The 2022 season saw Sam Mayer and Ty Gibbs get after each other at Martinsville as fists were flying down pit road. But even last year, it even happened at Watkins Glen. Ty Gibbs, as the Cup Series driver, would go down to the Xfinity Series and try to race for the win. Sam Mayer would ultimately dump him in turn number one and end up winning the race and had his post-race interview attacking Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs back into the gas. Austin Hill on his outside. Gibbs in a turn one. Contact made. He's tagged. Mayer gets into the back of him and around it goes. Hill also collected in it. They spin around. So far we stay green. We'll see if they keep going. So you're just calling that an accident, a racing incident? Yeah, that's an accident, but I think... I think everyone can agree that it's okay for an Xfinity Series regular to win this race. Congratulations. Thank you. That is Sam Mayer. Let's get the other perspective, Dylan Welch. Robbie Gordon is definitely a polarizing figure in the racing world, honestly, not just in NASCAR. But he became the villain in 2007 when NASCAR went to Montreal, Canada for the first time. Robbie Gordon wrecked Marcus Ambrose on the restart after he was wrecked under caution. He then did not serve his penalty and ultimately took the checkered flag, which looked like to be in first place. But ultimately, he was already disqualified and Kevin Harvick was placed as the victor. Robbie Gordon even did dual burnouts with Kevin Harvick. He was then fined and suspended after this incident. Brad Coleman involved, Ron Hornaday involved, and up front, Robbie Gordon by Ambrose, who goes back on him. Caution flags waving. We're being to Robbie Gordon still in line in second place on the racetrack. We're being told that he is going to be back around 12th place after they reviewed the scoring and and uh, put him in and, and determined that that's where he should be. Couldn't see that coming, could you? Oh, All right, so the lead is changing hands here. Now Kevin Harvick has just gone out in front. A confusing situation to this race. Robbie Gordon may now be first in line on the racetrack, but the lead belongs to Kevin Harvick. Vince, I'm here with Robbie Gordon. Got out of his race car, hopped on the roof, saluted the fans. Very rough racing there at the end. Robbie, what happened? Well, um, if you want to know my opinion, I won the race. So um, I completed all the laps. And if you've seen this happen before, guys get spun when they slow down. That's exactly what happened with Marcus. 
He spun me when I slowed down, and they tell me I'm going to go back to 17th. It's not the way it is. It's happened many times. They set presidents before, and we'll appeal it. We won this race. Ross Chastain has easily been one of the most polarizing race car drivers on the racetrack in today's world. You either really like him, or you probably can't stand the way he drives. Well, Noah Gregson had had enough of how Ross Chastain drove as he got put in the wall by Chastain at Kansas. He walked down to Chastain's car to have some words with him, but it wasn't long enough until Chastain threw the first punch as Noah Gregson just tugged on Chastain's fire suit. Let's go. 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 Let's go.